You are Stephen Mander Jones, and you're a gameplay designer at 2K Australia. Yep. And you are Anthony Birch, you're a writer at Gearbox Software. And we're showing off uh, Borderlands the pre sequel, and this is Wilhelm. Turn him around so we can see that beautiful face, yeah. He uh, is a boss in Borderlands 2, but before that happened, he was a dude. And this game is. Um, the origin dude story? Yeah, it's the origin. It's about dudes. It's just about where dudes come from. <laughs> Uh, mommy, where did dudes come from? Borderlands a pre-sequel is the answer. Uh, so basically, yeah, this takes place between Borderlands 1 and 2, so he's a dude who gets hired by um, Handsome Jack to stop some bad dudes from doing stuff on the moon. Can I say dudes more often? And now we're going to go into his skill tree because it actually ties into his character growth uh, into the cyborg we meet in Borderlands 2. Yep, so his action skill is the skill to summon his dudes. <laughs> um, Wolf and Saint, who are actually combat drones, not combat dudes. Um, so Wolf is the attack drone. Uh, he'll go out and attack your enemies. Saint is the support drone. He'll stay near you and keep you alive. Which one loves you more? Uh, probably Saint. Accurate. Yeah. You guessed correctly. Yeah. It's not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's have a look at his skill trees now. So we've got the hunter killer skill tree here. This one is um, heavily focused on upgrading Wolf, the attack drone. Uh, you can give Wolf sort of extra attacks. Like we've got venom bolts on the left here, which gives him the chance to fire corrosive uh, attack, so he's really good against armored targets. Uh, the next one down is called Laser Guided, which is really cool as well. It basically uh, allows Wilhelm to order Wolf to attack certain targets by using your action skill button while looking at targets, and then Saint sort of paints them with a laser, and then Wolf will focus his attacks on that target, which is really cool. So you can sort of be this battlefield commander and uh, play this mini game of commanding your drones. Um, and there's some other cool skills down there when we uh, we'll hop down to the capstone here, which is called Omega Strike, which is really cool as well. Basically, Wolf will occasionally launch out this missile strike, so by that point he's just doing ridiculous damage and just a whole lot of fun. And moving on now, we've got the Dreadnought skill tree. So this one uh, has some focus on Saint, the support drone. Um, you can basically buff up Saint so he, he heals you more, he... Uh, can like restore shields to your friends and heal your friends and cool stuff like that. Um, this skill tree also has a lot of nice uh, defensive boosts for Wilhelm. He basically becomes really hard to kill. Um, we're looking at one of his cool skills here called Termination Protocols. Uh, it essentially replaces Fight for Your Life, which is what happens when you go down. And rather than going down, he gets straight back up and can walk and shoot and he shocks nearby enemies. And then uh, when the timer runs out, he goes, his power core goes critical and he nukes himself, which can get second wind as well. So it's kind of cool. It's like in that movie about the killer robot. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you may have seen it. It was called Mr. McGorham's Wonder Emporium. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's why the skill is named. <laughs> um, another cool one here, which is the capstone for Dreadnought, is called Overcharge. Uh, when you summon Wolf and Saint, Saint releases an energy wave, which gives awesome buffs to you and all your friends. Uh, really cool to pop at the start of a boss fight. Um, you can just do tons of damage with it quickly. Really cool, and your friends will appreciate it if you've got that one. And the last skill tree I've got here is the Cyber Commando skill tree, which uh, focuses on the Wilhelm's, ba uh, the beginning of his process of essentially becoming a machine. So as we go through the skills, once we get to the game changer skills, uh, such as Power Fist, the next one just here, um, it actually replaces part of his body when you pick up this skill. So this one in particular, when we pick it up, you'll see his arm be replaced by a robotic arm, um, which gives it a special melee attack with uh, extra range, explosive damage, it's really cool. He's just saw a change on his body there. Um, we've got shock absorbers as well, which replaces his legs, uh, allows him to shoot while sprinting, which is really cool because no other Borderlands character has been able to do that before. Now he's um, got robo legs. Yep, robo legs and uh, lots of other cool skills in this tree. It's basically a mix of offensive and defensive stuff. A uh, cool one there that buffs his slam radius so he can slam lots of dudes. Um, and the capstone here is the Vengeance Cannon, which when we pick it up, you'll see the Vengeance Cannon appear on his back. Systems Just online. there. Don't slow me down. And you may have heard it as we went down, actually, but the further you get into this tree, the more robotic and uh, nefarious his voice becomes. He starts off sounding just like a dude, and then he gets processed more and more and more the further you get down and becomes more machine than man. More machine than dude? More machine than dude. <laughs> were you a dude but wish you were not a dude? <laughs> then Wilhelm is the dude for you. Yeah. 
So we're on the moon. Cool. So where on the moon are we? We're still looking for that signal to shut it down and uh, be able to get back to Helio so we can stop all the bad guys and uh, help our friend Handsome Jack, who is actually our friend and a nice guy in this game. Um, so this is ice. Yeah, so we've got one of our uh, new That's enemies cute. here. Why did you kill it? Oh. It didn't even attack you. This game has moral choices like do you shoot a thing or do you not? <laughs> if you don't, then the game doesn't but actually if, But work. if you don't, you don't get loot. Yeah, if you don't, then you're not actually playing the game. <laughs> But yeah, these are Kragons, one of our new enemies. Uh, you'll notice something cool here when this bigger one dies. Um, let's see, he splits up and two smaller ones pop out. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, and you also popped a uh, cryo vine next to him, which is what froze him. Oh, what's this gun? Oh, it's a laser. And it's different to the one we saw before. How? Um, well, this one has a TDO barrel, which essentially gives it a splitter beam, which is essentially a laser shotgun. and. I don't really need to say much more than that, I don't think. Laser shotgun. Steven, shut up, a plot thing is happening. Steven, what's that? A plot thing? I'm so enthralled. That's a laser. Bigger than the laser we've got. Why doesn't Jack have his mask yet? He doesn't need it. So that was Helios. Um, that's the place we're trying to get back to. That's the, the space station that shot a bunch of stuff at you in Borderlands 2. Jack was helping build it at the beginning of this game when he hired you to, uh, to uncover a vault and open it. And then you got attacked by some other dudes. Notice Wilhelm is really fast at reloading that laser gun because uh, Chris invested in the skill that makes him better with laser guns. Was Athena faster? I'm sorry, old pike and the gander, I no. So this is Peapot. He's just a side quest character. He's fun. He's one of them. Oh, what's going on? Kragons. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Destroy them. Yeah, we've got a slam going on there. And you will have seen that the slam actually did shock damage. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, Ozkits can do. Ozkits are one of our new pieces of gear. It does stuff like give you your oxygen supply, some other buffs, and it allows you to slam. And you can get Ozkits that uh, change your slam into different elements. So Wilhelm right now obviously has a shock one, which is really handy. So if you've got all your weapons of one type and you sort of want coverage of a different element, you can use your Ozkit to get that element into your arsenal. Chris should use his uh, action skill. I want to see Wolf Insane. Yeah, do that. Yeah. There they go, you can see Wolf cruising around, firing his, his attacks. You did it, Chris. And the cool thing you can do with Wolf and Saint as well is uh, if you sort of clear, clear all the enemies off and they've still got duration left, you can hold down the action skill button to recall them and get some of the cooldown refunded. So. Since it's like a long duration, long cooldown action skill, you don't need to stress too much about activating it at the wrong time since you've always got that option to recall them. So there's a geyser, an air geyser, which refills all your Oz up to full. Um, even though you can run out of oxygen in this game, A, it doesn't happen very often at all because there's so many ways to get more oxygen, enemies drop it, there are geysers all around the map. Um, and even if you do run out of oxygen, the, the health penalty for it is so small. Um, basically, oxygen runs out just to be a resource that balances out how often you can double jump and do slams because those are really powerful uh, maneuvers and you just didn't want you to be able to do that all the time without any consequences whatsoever. Here's another way to get oxygen. Look at this thing. What's this thing, Steven? Uh, this is an oxygen generator. So you can see as it comes on, this dome appears and then this whole area now has oxygen in it. Um, the other cool thing with this is there's some other effects that um, occur whether you're in or outside atmosphere. Uh, the obvious one is... Uh, incendiary weapons so you can't catch on fire if you're in a vacuum because there's no oxygen to burn um, and that can work two ways so if you've got a cool incendiary oh, weapon you sort of want to be in the atmosphere to ignite people but if you've got enemies trying to set you on fire you might want to switch it off so that they can't set you on fire uh, and you see we've just got the vengeance cannon popping out because your shield went down so if we start shooting you'll see all the big uh, fire blasts it does it's kind of destructive So I think we just saw someone talking to us. Do you want to tell us who that was, Anthony? That was Red Belly. Red Belly is the leader of this group of scavs, and he is parked right in front of that big ass uh, satellite dish that is sending the jamming signal up to Helios. So we're gonna have to fight our way past Red Belly 
um, and stop the jamming signal because we want to save the world because we're the good guys in quotation marks because even though we are actually working to save a bunch of innocent people, by the time Borderlands 2 comes around, most of these characters are uh, bosses. So the question is, Stephen, uh, are we heroes or is everybody just villains? What is it? Which is it? How does morality work? Talk to me. Every, everyone, everyone's a hero. Incorrect. Everyone is the worst. Anti-heroes are fun. Um, so Chris died. Yeah, he managed to kill all the enemies and then die. Yeah, which is impressive in its own way. More yeah. impressive than if he had just played like a good player and survived. <laughs> so we're going to watch him trudge back. But look at that skybox. Look at those colors. Not, not like up like that. I meant like I was talking to the viewer. God, I hate you. <laughs> Wait, n not me for clarity. No, not you. No, I like you. Welcome to comms facility. I like I that's that makes me chuckle a little bit every time that like in a, you're in stealing a, their money instead of shooting. Them. Or not that you're stealing their money, but that in a, in a no oxygen environment, the uh, the safes just pop off entirely. They don't just open normally. So yeah, we saw no, his robot it's, it's punch there. Explosive decompressurization. Yeah, I would pressurize my money too. Yeah. Um, it doesn't store. Is <laughs> so he is good at punching things to stun them with that awesome robot punch. It knocks the enemies back and does a lot of explosive damage to them. So you can actually use it to try to stun enemies that are doing a buttload of damage into, uh, to you to uh, basically stop shooting you. He's flying to meet his um, his creator. <laughs> um, yeah, usually like in Borderlands 2, your answer to what happens when I, should t when I take damage is, well, you should probably take cover. In this game, because you have so many mobility options, it seems as if uh, you would have the ability to freeze things or to punch things and stun them that way or to slam and then knock them back that way. Um, or to shoot a, a cryo barrel next to a, a bandit and then shatter him into a bunch of pieces and then get shot from behind because you're not actually paying attention to what's going on. I'm Chris Failer. But yeah, it's, it's a good point you make about the cover and stuff. Like with the low gravity cover, uh, you sort of view it completely differently because if there's an enemy hiding behind cover, you can be like, well, I don't really care. I can just jump up into the sky and drop a rocket on your head. Um, but this is the word. But conversely, like if you're hiding behind cover, the yeah, enemies yeah. the enemies have jetpacks and stuff as well, so they're going to be coming at you from above too. So you can't feel you too safe. You should just suicide. Yeah, you're Come not going. You're not going to kill him. You're you're going to want to use your lasers, Chris, because you spec into a skill that gives you more laser damage, and you use Wolf and Saint. And I should be playing. You're the worst. <laughs> this game is. Um, it's hard, apparently. Yeah, this is GoldenEye 64. If you're just joining us, playthrough two. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're on true Vault Hunter mode, so the game actually yeah. is harder, generally. So Chris has like half of the So if you're, if you're a first time player like Chris, don't play, <laughs> yeah. don't play playthrough 2. There we go, we're, now, off to, we're off to a good start this time. Yeah, now start sprinting around, make sure you still get your sprints going on, and then uh, be shooting at him. Yeah. You actually may want to take some cover now, even though I said this isn't necessarily a game about taking cover, you may want to, so if Saint has some time to heal you while the big badass guy is, is ruining your day. Your vengeance cannon did a couple shots on him. Well, the cool thing there was uh, run. Wolf is taking a lot of the aggro off you because he's good at annoying the enemies. Right. You can do this, Chris. You can do it. Green big. Hey, Arm mitzvah! Power fist finish. You did it. You became a man today. Hey, what's that? What's that? That's a moonstone. What's a moonstone? That's uh, that's one of our new currencies in uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. It, uh, it sort of has a similar role uh, as Iridium did in Borderlands 2. But canonically, it doesn't make sense that Iridium would be on the planet this time, because Iridium didn't show up until Borderlands 2. What's that all about? Yeah, you know, that just makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's also some uh, new things that uh, Moonstones will be used for, which we're not talking about just yet. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some more varied uses than uh, just Iridium. Chris just took a, uh, a turtle shield, which reduced his maximum health by almost 50%. I'm sure this is going to work out really well. Saint is secretly crying. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting closer to the signal source here. Chris is taking out his legendary shotgun. So, uh, you may have noticed it earlier, but he, uh, if you ever shoot a, a scab in the head when they have one of those um, oxygen helmets on, you, oh my god, you almost just blew yourself up with the grenade, your own grenade. Um, it will pop their oxygen helmet and they'll begin to asphyxiate, which means uh, a couple things. One, they will take some dot damage, 
uh, damage every turn, rather. And two, uh, they will, for a brief period of time, stop attacking you as they're too busy going, oh god, oh. Uh, and, and three, they look like who? They look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of Total Recall. Nice Yay. setup. Yes, thank you, you. Well, you almost missed it again. I almost, I would absolutely 100% would have missed mentioning Total Recall again for the fourth time. Nice. Oh, that was a good stomp. That was cool. I think you actually blew up a cryo barrel as well. Yeah, which is why you're now frozen yeah. and dying. That's all right. Just kill that guy. So he's a unique enemy, I'm assuming, named Moonstruck? No, Moonstruck is uh, the playthrough 2 version of the Lunatics. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. They're pretty tough. I keep forgetting when I'm playing through. Yeah. And the the cool thing about uh, the Lunatics, which are kind of like the Psychos in Borderlands 2, is that... Oh my god, I just got Lunatics. Really? I just got the joke. Holy shit. Oh, God damn it. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> I was going to talk about their jetpacks, but I go think ahead, what no, you... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, with the, with the moon environment Fuck. being a, sort of a, a different pace of gameplay, there's, there's, the lunatics have adapted to that too, and they actually have little booster packs where they will do this flying dash towards you, so they're not quite as predictable as the psychos in Borderlands 2, and they'll sort of be in your face a bit quicker. Asphyxiation. So much as asphyxiation as you pop all those helmets. Another badass. Let's see if Chris can take this one out on his first go. That's from the room. Who thinks he's going to do it? Jennifer, do you think he's going to do it? That's one word for yes. Oh, Jennifer's going to be so wrong. Uh, I think I've got faith in Wolf and I, Saints. Okay. Yeah. I think Wolf Not and yet. Saints. Don't put your faith in Chris, put your faith in Wolf and Saints. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that Merv grenade. Oh, God, I love the knockback from the stun, It's it, or from the slam. Yeah. It's such a nice little disruption in, in combat. Yeah, it adds a really nice element of utility to it. It's not just a damage thing. It's, yeah. it's good against uh, like lunatics, because you can say, hey, get away from me, I don't want you punching me in the head, in the Chris. face. Shoot him in the head, you want crits? Oh, oh, Jennifer's face was misplaced. God is dead and we're alone. Chris Failer, Borderlands pre-sequel. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this was uh, just a little bit of Borderlands, the pre-sequel. I'm Anthony Birch. I'm Steven Manda-Jones. 